There are so many amazing characters in the Avatar The Last Airbender world, many of which I've made videos on, but my favorite character in the series has to be Zuko. His redemption arc is just so well executed, and the great thing is, his story does not start and end with the three seasons of the show, because we've gotten so much information on his life before and after the series ended, as well as some stories that were not in the show but took place during that time. In this video, I'm going to put all of this together and explain the entire timeline of Zuko. Zuko was born to Prince Ozai and Princess Ursa. He had a great relationship with his mother, but a terrible one with his father, who always looked down on him. When he was born, they were not sure if Zuko was a bender or not, as he did not have the spark in his eyes that firebenders tended to have. And because of this, Ozai wanted to cast him away from the palace instead of admit that his son was not a bender. Ursa and the fire sages begged him not to do that, however, and Ozai gave him a chance. Sure enough, Zuko's bending ability eventually did come, but Ozai still despised his son. Zuko eventually became the older brother to his younger sister Azula, something that made his relationship with his father even worse, as he always favored Azula over him. Their family took vacations to Ember Island every summer, and while there, Zuko's mother would take Zuko and Azula to see a play called Love Amongst Dragons. On one of their vacations to the island, a three-year-old Zuko saw the hawk attacking a turtle crab, and he ran over to save it, but when he had the turtle crab safely in his arms, he realized that he was condemning the hawk to starve, and he didn't know which creature to side with. Before he could make a decision, a giant wave washed over him and carried him out into the ocean. Ozai dove in to save him, and Zuko spent the rest of the day in his mother's arms vomiting seawater. Though Ozai saved him, this incident made him see his son's affinity for the weak, something that he believed made Zuko himself weak. One night when Zuko had a nightmare about everything in his room being on fire and Azula just standing in the middle of the room laughing at him, he went to his mother's room and she comforted him and tucked him back into bed. Another time when they were in the palace garden, Zuko told on Azula for setting a bush on fire, and when their mother turned away, she set Zuko's butt on fire as revenge. Their mother sent Azula to her room and then asked Zuko if he was alright, and he answered saying that he didn't understand why Azula had to be so mean. Another time when Zuko was walking with his mother through the palace, Azula made Zuko play with her along with Mei and Tai Lee, and this led to Zuko tackling Mei and the two of them landing in a fountain, only to be laughed at by Azula and Tai Lee, saying that the two of them were cute together. Zuko was close with his uncle Iroh while growing up, but during most of his childhood, Iroh, the rightful heir to the throne, was gone a lot of the time because he was out leading battles. But Iroh did manage to send Zuko gifts, including a pearl dagger that said, Never give up without a fight, something that Zuko would cherish for years to come. One night when the family was having dinner, Azula told their father about their training and how the teacher was a dummy, and Zuko corrected her, saying that he was just telling her to do proper firebending techniques. This made Ozai slam his fist on the table and scream at Zuko, saying that despite being a year younger, Azula had mastered 14 more firebending forms than he had, and he then admitted to wanting to get rid of Zuko when he was born for not having the spark in his eye. He then finished it off, telling Zuko that Azula was born lucky, and he was lucky to be born. Urza stood up and made Ozai back down, and he stormed off, leaving Zuko feeling humiliated, hurt, and pathetic. Though Zuko was not a prodigy firebender the way Azula was, he was an expert in swordsmanship and he had been taught by the greatest swordsman master in the Fire Nation, Piondo. He made Zuko flawless when using his classic double sword combat. Despite this, Zuko was still forced to show his firebending abilities in front of his grandfather Azulan, and after following a perfect Azula, he fell and was terribly embarrassed. His mother came over and told him that she loved watching him, however, but Azulan was not as forgiving. He kicked everyone out, and Zuko and Azula overheard their father asking Azulan to make him Fire Lord and not his brother Iroh. This backfired and made Azulan punish Ozai by losing his firstborn, just as Iroh did days earlier. That night, Zuko's mother came and woke Zuko up, told him goodbye, and said to never forget who he was. She had struck a deal with Ozai to ensure Zuko's safety, and the next morning, Zuko ran to his father and asked where his mother was, but he did not answer. Zuko wouldn't find out what happened to his mother for many years, and for the remainder of his childhood, he didn't have his mother there to care for him, just his evil father who hated and despised him, and made his life hell. The same night his mother disappeared, Zuko's grandfather died in his sleep mysteriously, and Ozai took his brother's place and became Fire Lord, making Zuko suffering even worse. When he was young, Zuko's mother would always tell Zuko that whenever he was excited, he would get a sparkle in his eye, but this was something that he lost now that his mother was gone. 
After his mother left, Zuko became even closer to his uncle Iroh, as he had just lost a son and Zuko had just lost his mother, and the two bonded over this, filling the hole in their hearts the two of them were now missing. Zuko also made a connection with Mei, and realizing that they both liked each other, they began to hang out a lot together. One day, Zuko tried to enter a war meeting, but he was denied by the guards. However, his uncle Iroh allowed him to enter, and during the meeting, Zuko spoke out of term to a general. After his outburst, his father became angry and said that Zuko's defiance of the general was an act of complete disrespect, and that the only way to settle this was in Agni Kai. Zuko said he was not afraid of the general, but he had misunderstood. When he stepped into the fight, he faced his father instead, and Zuko refused to fight him. He went down on his hands and knees and cried, pleading with his father. Ozai showed Zuko no mercy and burned his face so badly that Zuko had a permanent scar on his left eye for the rest of his life. This scar was now what defined Zuko in his own mind and everyone else's mind throughout all of the Fire Nation. After the duel, his father told him that he had shown shameful weakness and he banished Zuko. The only way he could come home was if he captured the Avatar who had been missing for 100 years, making this a task that was nearly impossible. He was forced to leave life as he knew it, leaving his family, sister, and even Mei. Iroh decided to go with his nephew to watch over him, however, and he continued Zuko's firebending training and just kept him company. With his fresh burn wound, Zuko along with Iroh went to the Western Air Temple hoping to find the Avatar there. There he talked down to his uncle calling him lazy when Iroh was only trying to help, but he eventually realized that he was wrong for this. Zuko came to the realization that his uncle cared for him more than anyone, and though Iroh pushed his buttons sometimes, Zuko always appreciated and loved having his uncle with him. Zuko checked the rest of the air temples, as the avatar would be an airbender, and after having no luck there, they scoured the world, looking in even the most remote locations. While searching around the South Pole, Zuko saw a light shoot into the air, and he eventually tracked this to the Southern Water Tribe where he met the avatar for the first time, and he was shocked to find out that he was just a kid named Aang. Zuko took Aang on his ship, but when Aang went into the avatar state, he escaped despite Zuko's constant efforts. Later on when General Zhao began talking down to Zuko, Zuko challenged him to an Agni Kai and Zuko beat him. However, he did not kill him, which Zhao saw as weakness. And when Zuko had his back turned, Zhao tried to get a cheap shot on him, but Iroh stopped him and said that Zuko was more honorable than him, something that meant a lot to Zuko. Zuko later tracked Aang to Kiyoshi Island, but again Aang got away, this time with the help of the Kiyoshi warriors. There were several more times when Zuko came close to capturing the Avatar, once even going head to head with Zhao to do it, but again and again, Aang got away. One day Zuko's ship got caught in a storm, and Zuko risked his life to save a member of his crew, which also proved his worth to the rest of the crew who disliked him before that. One day when Zuko was about to give up on finding the Avatar, he came up with a plan to wear a mask and use his swordsmanship, and he became the Blue Spirit, giving him new life. He used this disguise to rescue Aang from Zhao, and he was forced to work together with Aang to escape. Later on, Zuko came up with an elaborate plan and faked his own death, making Zhao think that he actually killed him. He then snuck into the Northern Water Tribe during Zhao's attack, and Zuko was finally successful in capturing Aang. However, he had nowhere to go in the snowstorm, and when Team Avatar arrived, he was knocked out. Luckily for him though, Aang decided to save him. While back in the Northern Water Tribe, Zuko had a rematch with Zhao, but during their fight, Zhao was taken by the Water Spirit. Zuko tried to save him, but Zhao refused to let Zuko do so. Zuko and Iroh escaped, and when his uncle asked why he wasn't trying to capture the Avatar, Zuko said he was tired and he rested. One day, Azula met Zuko and Iroh and told Zuko that he was now welcome to come back home. However, it turned out to be a trap, and both Zuko and Iroh discovered that they were prisoners, not guests. They fought back and escaped, and they were forced to go on the run, cutting their hair and beginning their new life. However, Zuko eventually decided to go on his own path, and he left his uncle, though little did he know he was being followed by Iroh the whole time. During his time on his own, he saw a wife and a husband cooking food, and he planned to steal it. But despite being starving, when he realized the woman was pregnant, he decided not to, showing a softer side to Zuko. This led him to an Earth Kingdom town where he met a kid named Glee. Zuko met Lee's family and helped them by doing labor and return for food and shelter, and during the night, he taught Lee how to use his swords. After Zuko left, Lee's mother chased after him because Lee had been kidnapped, and Zuko went to fight the men off. 
He fought well until he was knocked to the ground, and when he awoke, he firebended, beat the men, and proudly told the crowd that he was Prince of the Fire Nation. This led to one person calling him out and saying that he was banished and disgraced. And Zuko, slightly humiliated, tried to give Lee the knife that Iroh had given him, but Lee screamed at him saying that he hated Zuko, and Zuko was forced to leave the town. Zuko was later reunited with Iroh after Azula injured their uncle. When Iroh awoke, Zuko had Iroh show him how to redirect lightning, and Zuko later found himself in a lightning storm, and he yelled to the skies while crying, saying that he could now shoot whatever life threw at him back, the lightning being a metaphor for this. Zuko and Iroh eventually decided to go to Ba Sing Se, and while there, Zuko helped Iroh run the tea shop he had started. One day, Iroh encouraged Zuko to go on a date with a girl named Jin. During the date, Jin took Zuko to her favorite fountain, and when it wasn't lit, Zuko lit it with firebending behind her back, which made Jin super happy. The two then kissed, but Zuko pulled away saying that it was complicated, and he ran off. When he returned home, he told his uncle that he had a good time, but all he could think about was Mei, who he realized he missed terribly. Zuko went back to his old ways when he found out that the Avatar was in the city, and he eventually found himself in Lake Laogai wearing his blue spirit mask again. He was then confronted by his uncle, who yelled at him, talking some sense into him. Iroh told him to find his own destiny, not a destiny that someone else forced him to do. He told him to look inward and ask who he was and what he wanted. Zuko realized that his uncle was right, and he started a new path by freeing Appa, Aang's bison, and he threw the blue spirit mask to the bottom of the lake. Doing this sent Zuko into a sickly state, however, as his decisions were in such conflict with the image that he had of himself that he was now at war with his own mind and body, something that was called a metamorphosis. He came out of this metamorphosis happier than he had been in years, something that made his uncle very happy as well, and did wonders to the relationship. Zuko and Iroh were lured in by Azula, and as they ran to escape, Zuko decided he had to face Azula and told his uncle to go on. Zuko was captured and was held with Katara, and the two bonded over losing their mothers. This made Katara sympathize with Zuko, and she was about to use spirit water to see if it could heal a scar, but Iroh, Aang, and Toph came in before they got the chance. Eventually, Zuko had to choose who to side with, and during a huge battle, he ended up siding with Azula, something that disappointed his uncle greatly, and undid the metamorphosis he had just gone through, making all of the happiness he had gained from it vanish. Iroh was locked up in Ba Sing Se, and one day when Zuko was walking past his cell, he heard two Fire Nation guards say that Iroh was a good man, and this made Zuko yell at them, saying that he was a traitor to the Fire Nation, more to convince himself that he had made the right choice than to punish the guards. When he visited Azula, she told Zuko that they were going home, and Zuko said that she could go without him. To make him want to come home, Azula and Tai Lee put together a date for Mei and Zuko, hoping that Mei would persuade him to come home. When Zuko and Mei arrived, they realized they were set up, but not wanting the food to go to waste, they decided to have dinner together. When Zuko found out that Azula was in the bushes, he yelled at her, and he and Mei decided to leave, instead taking a walk through the city. While doing this, however, they ran into Jin, the girl that Zuko had gone on a date with, and she asked him who Mei was, which Zuko responded to saying that she was a knife thrower part of the circus he came from, a lie he had told her to cover up his Fire Nation identity during their date. Mei told Jin that she could show her, pushed Zuko next to the fountain, put a fish on his head, and threw an icicle through the fish. Then she let Jin try, and this knocked Zuko into the fountain, and Mei, referencing the time Zuko tackled her into the fountain, said that they were now even. Zuko yelled at her afterward, but as she laughed, he said that she was finally enjoying herself, and he told her that he missed this side of her. The two then kissed, ending the night perfectly. The next morning, Zuko walked Mei to the ship taking her home, and when she asked if he was coming with them, the combination of her asking and him seeing Iroh and someone asking if he'd make it home alive, Zuko decided to go home to be with Mei and to ensure that Iroh was alright. Zuko came back home to the Fire Nation, and after Azula had told their father that he had killed the Avatar, Zuko went along with it. This made his father more welcoming, and made him want Zuko in war meetings by his side, a feeling that Zuko had never felt before with his father. However, coming home led to more turmoil, especially with Iroh locked up and Zuko feeling guilty. He wasn't sure if he had made the right choice or not. One good thing about Zuko coming home, however, was that he was reunited with Mei, and the two began to date again. Zuko, Mei, Azula, and Tai Lee took a beach trip to Ember Island where Zuko and Azula would go as kids, and they all hung out on the beach. That night, they went to the Ember Island arcade, and Zuko won Mei a stuffed animal, but she refused to take it. 
Azula then called them over to play a game, and Zuko and Azula got super competitive. Zuko got so into it that he burned the game down with firebending, and the gang walked off as it caught up in flames. While on the island, Zuko got into a fight with Mei, and after storming off, he found old pictures and artwork from his childhood. Seeing this, along with the three girls encouraging him to let his feelings out, Zuko finally realized that his turmoil stemmed from his anger with himself. Things were made even more clear for Zuko when Iroh told him that his great-grandfather on his mother's side was Avatar Roku, and he realized that he was on the wrong side. On the day of the Black Sun, something that took firebending away for a short amount of time during an eclipse, Zuko faced his father and finally stood up to him. When the eclipse ended, Ozai shot lightning at Zuko, but he shot it right back just as Iroh had taught him to do, and Zuko escaped, tried to free his uncle only to realize that Iroh had escaped on his own, and he then followed Team Avatar to the Western Air Temple. He confronted the team and said that he wanted to join them and teach Aang firebending, and though they were skeptical, Zuko proved his worth by helping fight off Combustion Man, and they allowed him to join their team. He took a journey with many of the members of the team, first with Aang to confront the firebending masters, two dragons named Ran and Shaw, which gave Zuko his bending back with a new purpose of firebending and allowed him to help teach Aang. When they began their training, Zuko told Aang that he didn't think there were any dragons left, and Aang said that there were lots of dragons around 100 years ago, and he told Zuko a story about how he had tried to find one before he was frozen in the ice. Zuko also went on a journey with Sokka, and he helped him break his father and girlfriend Suki out of the Boiling Rock, a prison where he saw Mei again for the first time since he left the Fire Nation without saying goodbye, something that broke her heart. As they were escaping, Zuko realized that Mei forgave him, as he watched her give herself up to ensure their escape, something that led to her being locked up, but she clearly thought it was worth it to protect Zuko. Zuko then helped Katara track down the man who had killed her mother, and all three of these trips helped Zuko connect with and become closer to everyone on the team. One day, Sokka challenged Zuko to a sword fight, as both of them were trained by Piondo, but Zuko said he was too advanced for Sokka and he recommended he try to fight someone else. Seeing Sokka's face, however, Zuko agreed to the fight, and he completely destroyed him over and over again. Zuko held his sword down at Sokka and told him to give up, but Sokka said that this coming from the guy who unsuccessfully hunted Aang for three years didn't mean much. This made Zuko angry, and when Sokka charged at him again, Zuko knocked Sokka's sword away. However, Sokka took out his boomerang and hit Zuko in the back of the head with it. Aang told Sokka afterwards though that Zuko still won. Zuko was terrified to face his uncle again after letting him down so miserably, but when he finally got the chance to do so, he apologized and was beyond happy that his uncle forgave him for everything. Later on while in a tent with his uncle, they felt earthquakes and Zuko went to find the rest of Team Avatar who were missing. When he found them, he discovered Team Avatar watching Toph and Boomy fight, and Zuko was exasperated. When they realized that the only way to stop them was to physically stop it, Zuko led a team of benders and old masters to put a stop to it. Zuko, Iroh, and Piondo stopped Toph while the others stopped Boomy, and afterwards, Zuko told both Toph and Boomy to act their own age. When Sozin's Comet arrived, Zuko and Katara went to the Fire Nation to make sure Azula would not become Fire Lord. When they got there, Azula challenged him to an Agni Kai to decide who would be Fire Lord, and when Zuko began to beat her, Azula cheated by going after Katara. Zuko jumped in front of her, however, to save her, and was pretty badly hurt. After Katara took Azula down, she healed Zuko. As the war came to an end, Zuko was reunited with Mei after she was released, and Zuko and Aang worked together to bring the world into a new and peaceful era. Zuko became Fire Lord, and one of the first things that he did was to go see his father who was locked up and asked what happened to his mother. Another thing that Zuko did as Fire Lord was begin the removal of the Fire Nation colonies in the Earth Kingdom, and he did this through the Harmony Restoration Movement, specifically to remove Yu Dao, the first of the Fire Nation colonies. He met with the Earth King to do this, and said that he had to right his father's wrongs. He then put a lot of pressure on Aang, and made Aang promise that if he begins to turn into his father, that Aang would end him. About a year later, Zuko woke up in the middle of the night to an attacker, the daughter of the mayor of Yu Dao, and she was angry that Zuko was making them leave their home. When he confronted the mayor, he was called a coward, which infuriated him. But the mayor forced him to see that Yu Dao wasn't actually bad, and had Fire Nation and Earth Kingdom people living and thriving together. After seeing this, Zuko got rid of the Harmony Restoration Movement, and refused to give Yu Dao back to the Earth Kingdom. When Katara and Aang showed up to question him on this, Zuko grabbed Katara, which led to himself and Aang getting into a fight, but luckily it was quickly stopped by Katara. 
When Zuko came back from Yu Dao, he was confronted by Mei, who was once again angry at him for leaving without telling her. She forgave him though, and said that she could tell he wasn't sleeping, so she hired the Kyoshi warriors to guard him at night. Zuko once again woke up in the middle of the night, but this time it was to visit his father again. This was something that Zuko did quite often, and the visits offered nothing but bad advice, pain, and more confusion for Zuko. One day when Zuko was in his throne, he was confronted by Mei, who asked him about visiting his father, something that Suki had seen and told her about. He told Mei that he loved her, but this wasn't enough to fix all the lies that he had told her, and she broke up with him. Zuko stupidly ordered her to come back, but Mei refused to turn around. Suki then admitted to telling Mei, and she told him that she was really worried about him. Before he could process this, however, he was told that the Earth King and his army were moving toward Yu Dao, and Zuko headed there as well, backed up by his own Fire Nation army, ready for war. Doing this made Aang realize that he might have to fulfill the promise he had made to Zuko to end him. During the huge battle, Aang went into the Avatar stage, split the ground in two to separate the two armies, and as Zuko fell into the hole, Aang grabbed him and saved him. Luckily, before Aang had to fulfill the promise, something that he was most likely not going to do anyway, Zuko realized that he had let his father get into his head, and he came to the realization that he himself would have made the right decisions had it not been for his father. Zuko then passed out, and Aang brought him to Iroh's tea shop in Ba Sing Se. Zuko once again went through a metamorphosis, just as he had done a few years earlier. Zuko was passed out for four days, and when he awoke, he was a better person. Aang then told Zuko that they were going to have to have negotiations with the Earth King over what to do with Yu Dao. Zuko went to the meeting, and afterwards, he thought back to his talks with his father and the one thing he had not told him about, the thing that made Zuko go down there in the first place, where his mother was. He recruited his sister Azula to help find her, but this proved difficult as she was clinically insane and was a patient at the Fire Nation's insane asylum. After getting her out, he recruited Team Avatar minus Toph and Suki, and together they journeyed to find his mother. They had many hiccups, including Azula trying to run away. That night, Zuko watched as Sokka was a good brother and put a blanket over Katara, but when Zuko tried to do this for Azula, he found a letter that said he was not Ozai's son. This changed Zuko's thinking, and he realized that he might not have been the heir to the throne. Later on, Zuko once again got into a fight with Azula, and he asked her why the relationship had to be like this, but he put her down as they arrived to an understanding to keep things peaceful. Eventually, the gang met Noriko and her family, including her daughter Kiyi, who Zuko was really good with. They eventually found the Mother of Faces, and Azula asked where their mother was, and the spirit told them that Noriko was Ursa. Zuko ran to her house, and he told her that he was her son. However, she did not remember, as the Mother of Faces had not only taken her face, but her old memories as well. Azula then burst in and went after their mother, but Zuko put a stop to it. Azula ran off and told Zuko that even when he was strong, he was weak. Zuko and his mother chased after her, but they were stopped by the Mother of Faces, who restored Ursa's memories. And after all these years, Zuko finally had his mother back. On top of that, he also had another sister, Kiyi. Ursa apologized to Zuko, and he forgave her. He then asked her about the letter that said he wasn't Ozai's son, and she explained that the letter wasn't real, and that he was in fact the son of Ozai. On the way back to the Fire Nation, Zuko promised his mother that he would protect her family, especially Kiyi. And when he got word from Suki of danger, he changed the plans to ensure their protection. Zuko was reunited with Iroh and himself along with Ursa and her family boarded a submarine, while Iroh took Zuko's place as a decoy. However, despite their planning, they were still ambushed, and Zuko along with Suki fought many of them off, but when they were outnumbered, Mei and the other Kiyoshi warriors came to their aid. Zuko fought side by side with Mei, and it was the first time that they had seen each other since their breakup. Zuko then showed his power and sent the thugs running, ensuring Ursa and her family's protection. Zuko led Ursa and her family in the palace and said that they would stay there. While back in the Fire Nation, Mei's little brother Tom Tom was kidnapped by what appeared to be spirits called the Kimura Kage, and Zuko came as soon as he heard, saying that he could help. Zuko was later talked down to by Mei's father, saying that it was his fault that the spirits were terrorizing them. Zuko along with Aang, Mei, and much to Zuko's distress, Mei's new boyfriend, all went down to the catacombs to learn more about the Kimura Kage spirits. And while down there, Zuko got very jealous of Mei and her new boyfriend. Zuko and Mei had a moment of their own, however, and it was clear that they both still had feelings for each other. However, Mei snapped at him, saying that he had to move on. When they returned to the Fire Nation, Kiyi was kidnapped, and Zuko along with Suki and Aang tried desperately to get her, but the spirits were too fast and too strong. 
However, when Zuko was almost hit by lightning, he knew that these were no spirits, but his sister Azula. Azula got a direct hit on Zuko, sending him flying back, and Azula escaped with Kiyi. Mei comforted Zuko when she heard the news, which made Zuko feel much better. When he was with Mei, Mei saw her boyfriend being arrested, and initially, Zuko went head to head with him, but then he realized that he had to let him go, and he was forced to watch jealously as the two hugged each other. Zuko along with Mei, Mei's boyfriend, and Aang went to face Azula and her disciples, and Azula used Mei's boyfriend to make him stand down, which Zuko almost did not do, but ultimately, he realized he had to. Zuko and Azula then had a rematch and fought one on one. Azula got the upper hand and was on top of Zuko, but to Zuko's surprise, she got up and told him that her plan of turning Zuko into Ozai had worked, as he was ruling very ruthlessly. Zuko yelled that she was wrong, but Azula then disappeared in a flash of smoke, and as she left, she left him with the parting words saying, Accepted, it. it's who you are. Zuko went on to prove her wrong, however, and he gave a speech saying that he had not been the best ruler in the last few weeks, but he told everyone that he was going to do better. Zuko, as well as the Earth King, later went to a meeting in the Southern Water Tribe to negotiate a few things with Sokka and Katara's father, the new leader of the tribe. When they arrived, there were protesters, and Zuko realized that they were protesting them. Zuko was very happy to be reunited with Sokka, and he gave him a hug, but then said that maybe they should get away from all of the hostility with the protests. During negotiations, Zuko said that they could count on the Fire Nation in helping the South, grateful for a chance to help them rebuild. They were interrupted by the resistance, however, and Zuko tried to help fight them off, but they managed to kidnap the Earth King. Zuko went along with Sokka's plan to get him back, but while on a bridge that stretched over two mountains, it was broken, and Zuko and a few others had to hold on for dear life. Zuko ended up saving the Earth King and got him to safety, and the others took care of the rest. Zuko was then part of a feast with people from all different nations, eating and socializing in harmony. Zuko fighting to keep Yu Dao a Fire Nation capital in the Earth Kingdom was a big factor in the creation of the United Republic of Nations and its capital, Republic City. Zuko, with the help of Aang, made the United Republic a prosperous and safe country where benders and non-benders of all nations could live together peacefully. Zuko would later go on to have a daughter named Azumi, and later on would have a grandson named Iroh. Zuko and Aang remained lifelong friends, with Aang oftentimes turning to Zuko for advice, and Zuko in return would always trust the Avatar's instincts. Zuko went on to adopt a dragon named Druk, and he trained the dragon to be loyal to him. Zuko also helped Tenzin, Sokka, and Tanrock deal with Zaheer and his gang of criminals, and they locked them up in prisons created by the White Lotus. Zuko remained Fire Lord for many years, but he eventually passed the responsibility down to his daughter Azumi, and he chose to leave the Fire Nation capital and live on Ember Island, where his family used to go on vacation. He went on to become an ambassador for world peace, and he took on part of the responsibility to ensure the Avatar's safety. When Zuko learned of Zaheer and his allies' escape years after their original capture, he went to the Northern Water Tribe where the last member of Zaheer's gang still resided, and he waited for their inevitable attack. When they did show up, Zuko tried to fight them off with a surprising amount of strength, but he was soon knocked down and was forced to watch them escape. He was later reunited with Avatar Korra, who he had not seen since she was very little, but they then got bad news that Zaheer had killed the Earth Queen. Finding out that Zaheer was going after the nation's leaders, Zuko knew he needed to protect his daughter Azumi, who was still the Fire Lord. Before leaving, however, Korra asked Zuko's advice on what Aang would do in the situation, and Zuko responded with some very helpful advice, Korra then mentioned that she had talked with his uncle Iroh in the spirit world, and Zuko was in disbelief. Zuko wanted to ask so many questions, but they were cut off when Mako interrupted them. Zuko then went to protect his daughter, and after Zaheer was taken down, Zuko paid his respects to an injured Korra in Republic City. After Korra left though, Zuko voiced his concerns about a world without the Avatar, and a world where the Red Lotus, Zaheer's group, might still be out there. A little while later, Zuko was present when Jinora received her airbending tattoos. Zuko's journey is one that had so many complicated points and stops, each one defining the man he would eventually become. His rough childhood toughened him. His mission to find the Avatar challenged him in ways he never thought possible. His time on the run with his uncle humbled him. His return to the Fire Nation and his father gave him clairvoyance and made him realize what he was meant to do. His time with Team Avatar gave him new purpose. His time as Fire Lord taught him many lessons, and his fatherhood gave him the chance to pass all his wisdom down to his own blood. It's probably the most complicated character arc in the series, and breaking the timeline I just went over down, it's probably one of the best.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe. And look out for more great videos on the way.